Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines, those swashbuckling ladies who have to work a little harder than expected for their happy ending. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. the pick of the week holy shit i need to I turn had to... my volume <laughs> i just uh deafened jordan <laughs> that was good though i had to get it out before i thought about it too much it's like when you're like cliff jumping or something <laughs> base jumping <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna go jump off this cliff anyways <laughs> it's my pick of the week uh, and I am picking yet another one outside of the fantasy romance uh, genre. So apologies in advance or like not really because I'm not sorry. <laughs> no, I think we we focus on heroines, whatever genre they may be in. Yeah. That's we'll, what we're going to go with. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my pick this week is called Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. This book just came out and I actually found out about it because the Julie Soto also writes fan fiction. It uh, always comes back to fan fiction. Katie. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> so she wrote this like pretty popular fan fiction that I have read and I like kind of liked it, but it's like one of the like popular ones that everybody talks about. It's like all over Bookstagram or whatever. Um, it's called The Auction uh, in her like fanfic secret name. What is that called? A uh, pen name? Oh, yeah. Her pen name um, is, <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> brain was not working. <laughs> Loves Bitka 8, I think. I don't know how. I, I need you to tell me about the fan fiction before we go into this book. Oh, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> because I'm going to read it tonight. <laughs> okay, that's fair. This one is like, okay, so actually for my like three books that, you know, if you like this one, you would also <laughs> the like the these ones. The fan fiction on there. Uh, yes, I have one fan fiction recommendation that's like A plus. So if you're going to read any of them, read that one. But the auction is about like, I don't know that I could like put this into coherent words kind of we're thing. on a podcast you better <laughs> you better try Katie. that's fair <laughs> i mean i you know for the past however many episodes i've had words but maybe not coherent <laughs> words that's um, so it's kind of like handmaiden's tale but a little bit more high school drama e almost so it's like voldemort didn't like wasn't killed during the why are you laughing <laughs> Because <laughs> I was not expecting you to say Voldemort. <laughs> That's fair. That was not on Jordan's bingo card. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> She's actually crying. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hold it together. Continue. Yeah, this <laughs> is Harry Potter uh, fan fiction, okay? <laughs> she still has not pulled it together. All right, I'm here. I'm here for, I'm here for the Harry Potter fan fiction. Uh, I never thought I would say those words in my that's life. That's fair. <laughs> that's just at the point that we are at, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. So Voldemort never was killed. And then it's like the fallout from that, basically. It's pretty like high school drama-y. And as far as fan fiction goes, it's like, all right. But her actual book, Forget Me Not, is really good. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have one kind of gripe about it, but the rest of it's really cute. Um, so the concept is, and this is the book, forget me not, not the fan fiction. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this girl, she is, I forgot her name. That's okay. The girl. That's fine. Yeah, the girl, <laughs> the heroine. Um, so she's a wedding planner and uh, she does these kind of smaller, you know, budget weddings after leaving the company that she worked for since she got out of high school for this girl named like Whitney, who is like kind of a big time wedding planner in Sacramento. Oh, yeah. Sac Sacramento or San Jose. Somewhere in California. Anyways, she left, does like lower budget weddings or whatever, really likes it, loves it. Except she all of a sudden is asked to do the wedding for this like social media influencer, makeup guru, gu guru, guru, the, guru. Yes. there we go, <laughs> makeup guru. And it's the biggest wedding she's ever had to do. And so she, the girl, the social media influencer's wife is friends with this guy who does florist, like boot. A uh, button. No, it's not a button. No, I, yeah. What is that? A florist. A florist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
botanist. <laughs> the man has a PhD now. <laughs> uh, he's a florist, and you find out that he and the wedding planner heroin chick uh, used to be together, and then they had a big falling out because her mom has been married like 17 times, and so she's like, I am never going to get married because obviously marriage is a farce. And then they are dating and everything's super cute and romantic and adorable, and then he proposes to her, and she's like, I literally told you I don't ever want to get married and then they break up. But then for the social media influencer's wedding, she has to have him be the florist because he's like friends with the wife or soon to be wife. And also he's just a really talented florist. And so hijinks ensue, including a falling bathtub that breaks her foot and like a dance floor that's made out of like flowers and silicone. Like it sounds super cool. And it was adorable. I laughed out loud several times in it's split time. What is that called? Not flashbacks, but certain chapters are happening like three years ago and then yeah, other chapters. Flashbacks is probably the best mm. way. So there's flashbacks. So you get like their romance while now they aren't uh, talking oh, at all. That's a cool system. Yeah. Way to overlay and like show the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then obviously they end up like together at the end, but it was super cute. It was funny. The only things I didn't like about it was there's kind of a little bit of a weird power dynamic between the two um, love interests. So there's a lot of like moments that kind of normalize taking away agency from the other person. So they'll have like boundaries and then like immediately that person person kind of exceeds that boundary and they don't really address it that much. So that was the only thing that I didn't really love about it. But other than that, it was super cute. It's just like a cheesy contemporary romance, basically. So what do you think of that? Uh, maybe trope isn't the right word, but I know some people like to be surprised, mm -hmm. but I think marriage is such a big deal. Like you should have many thorough conversations yeah. about whether you should get married and like what mm -hmm. does marriage mean to you before a proposal ever happens yep. so like i don't know does it happen in the book where you get a flashback where they actually talk through those things or did he's like no i love you surprise I'm yeah like so she's like super upfront the whole time about not ever wanting to be married and like she explains why and how her mom has been married 17 times to all of these different people and it never works out and she falls out of love and so it's one of those like she's obviously scared of like that kind of commitment and so she's super upfront and then they have some super cute like romantic thing where it's like oh this is a pretty serious relationship like i don't want to ever be with anyone else and he's like marry me and then obviously that did not go well like <laughs> yeah like how did he expect that to end i have no idea right? like, so <laughs> I, I guess i have i have problems already with this dude like yeah. this dude as a character because yeah. she's being nothing but honest with you mm -hmm. uh you could have a perfectly happy relationship without that factor in there and then you just gotta ruin it yeah like, yeah and then so they break up at that point and then that's like the fallout and then the current timeline is her like three years later maybe having to ask him for help to do this merit this wedding or whatever and it kind of sucks because at the end they have her propose to him like you know their marriage yeah, that was my back. next question was like that's how it has to happen yeah but it it just feels like you have this pretty set boundary and i get you know it was a boundary kind of set out of fear almost but then to have that oh but he's the exception like I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure I always love that, but... This is probably one of the first picks of the week where I'm not interested sold on yeah. the book. He, the love interest, though, is uh, grumpy, and she's the sunshine, and he also has long black hair and tattoos of extinct flowers, and he has a soft, soft spot for his dad, because he was supposed to be an engineer, and his dad owned, like, the family florist company, but he got cancer, and he's like please take on like this, you know, uh, our family heritage. Like you don't really have to. I want you to go get your like college degree, but maybe you could help me a little bit. And then he wasn't going to tell anyone that he had cancer. And then he like died and he's like, I need to take on the family like company. Like I feel so bad. So it's kind of adorable. He's like a nice, he's a little bit more sensitive, I think, than most love interests are portrayed. Mm -hmm. um, you actually get, because it's the past is mostly from his perspective. And so like he's definitely portrayed in like a sensitive kind of like emotional way, which is, it was refreshing, I'll say, because mm -hmm. most of the time they're just like gruff alpha male types, basically. It surprises <laughs> me that he's the grumpy one then. 
Yeah, he's like the grumpy, oversensitive, like sweet on the inside kind. One of his like things that he does is he's a total asshole to customers, but as he's being an asshole to them, he's making them like a handmade one of a kind bouquet based on like what he thinks of them and like what his impression is of them. And it's always spot on, but he's being an asshole the whole time. Hmm. I feel like I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this because there was absolutely points where I was like laughing during this out loud. And my partner is like, uh, what are you reading? <laughs> Maybe I'll try it. It's Maybe. Or, it was you know okay. I'll, I'll dabble in the fan fiction. So that's fair. Okay. So my three um, books that are similar. So two of these I had to ask you for because I have not read a lot of contemporary <laughs> romance. Um, and so these are kind of like Jordan's recommendations based oh, off no, my. <laughs> don't judge my 20 year old contemporary romance reading that's here. Where... Um, so yeah. the first one is To Die For by Linda Howard. Okay. That one is really good though. <laughs> I love that you were immediately like, mm, no, but it's I forgot which ones you like. We talked talked about uh -huh. last time um that one is so good continue what is it about though okay you're probably not gonna want to read about this character type right off the bat because oh. so the heroine is like total blonde bombshell cheerleader in high school super popular uh -huh. and she's like the ultimate barbie and mm -hmm. i guess there's a barbie obsession right like right now so yeah this barbenheimer <laughs> true um <laughs> i think the main character's name is blair uh -huh. um yeah so super popular bubbly but kind of take charge alpha type oh, cheerleader love so it. she owns her own gym Mm -hmm. And there is a murder, I think, that happens in her oh, gym. Shit. Like, full <laughs> crime scene happens. And the hot detective that shows up is like, hot mm, detective. Very hot. And <laughs> they have like battle of wills kind of style relationship oh. where like he's like not certain if she's a suspect or not. Mm -hmm. so it turns out she's like the next victim. Oh, shit. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> this is very much like romantic suspense. Oh, okay. Thriller mm -hmm. type. It's super cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds almost like a better version of this book because there's not a lot of conflict in this like really the only conflict is is she going to be able to put this wedding together yeah but in like hijinks ensue so it's like kind of fun this would be a really good rom-com this book. yeah yeah a lot of those yeah, yeah. kind of a romance makes for good hallmark rom-com movies i could see movies. that yeah. yeah and then uh the other recommendation you had is good night tweetheart oh teresa <laughs> medeiros um, yeah Med teresa how do you say it mm -hmm. <laughs> that was very low um medeiros sure uh, I've never yes. said that author's name aloud. I, I, <laughs> I know the author, but... Uh, good night, Tweetheart. <laughs> it's super cute. I couldn't tell you, like, the entire plot, but... That's fair. <laughs> I, I think it's mostly centered around... This is back when published, back when Twitter was, like, the big big uh, thing on the social media mm -hmm. spectrum. Now it's called, like, X or something. It, no, uh, Elon Musk has yeah, gone off the deep yeah, end. Yeah, so don't <laughs> judge this book based on current Twitter. Think of, like, when Twitter <laughs> first came out. The, like, cool Twitter. <laughs> yeah, so it is, like, the modern-day version of, like, a what's that fancy word for describing, like, romance via letters? There's a, there's a Oh, word. girl, you are asking the wrong person. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a word or a phrase for it. I don't remember what it is. Rob probably knows. I just have a black screen in my face. <laughs> like It's like the command prompt. Like, are you going to say something? <laughs> um, basically, I think these two people can only communicate like via like tweet. And uh -huh. there's like a secret identity reveal thing, if oh. I remember correctly. I think I've read that book maybe twice. I might reread. This is like You've Got Mail, right? I think so. The rom-com yeah. or something? Oh, I, I've never said that, but I feel like you told me that. So now I'm... Yeah, that's, that <laughs> For the right. benefit of the readers. Anyway, <laughs> super cute. Okay, cool. And then the last one. Oh, my God. So I love this fan fiction oh so God. fucking much. <laughs> so it's called Draco Malfoy and the Mortifying Ordeal of Being in Love by um, Is This Self-Care? This is... So... I feel like a lot of romance books are always the girl falls first or the girl is kind of like hyper obsessed with the male character. But this is the opposite. So he falls in love with her first. Is it Hermione? Yeah, obviously. Oh, okay. Girl, come on. <laughs> Just checking. Um, but she's like a super competent like medical researcher and she's on the verge of like making this huge discovery that's going to like change the entire planet. And except there's like a threat against her life, pretty credible one. And so she has to have a protection team. That's where Draco Malfoy comes in. And it's him so he's competent, but like kind of lazy almost like he's very like suave and like, I'm just going to do like the bare minimum. But he's like constantly impressed by like all the crazy shit that she's doing. And like she's a very like private person, but like just forced proximity basically in Okay, question on this one. Is it set in like Harry Potter world or is it just the uh, characters like taken? Yeah. From 
it's in the Harry Potter world, but you don't have to know a lot about Harry Potter to enjoy it, if that makes sense. So does it build off of like the established how the books ended and goes from there or like like uh, the like the other one you recommended? Yeah, I guess kind of, but like not so much because like Hermione and Ron don't end up together. Mm. So it's like kind of like the first parts of the book happen but maybe not the like epilogue part of the 20 years after yeah but it's just written so well the banter is really good it's like you don't you want them what's it called uh i'm gonna i'm gonna look it right (laughs) that's fair uh draco malfoy and the mortifying ordeal of being in love that's why i couldn't remember it (laughs) it's super long so it's kind of fun this is called (laughs) datmobile that's cute (laughs) that's like the acronym for it yeah and it's told from his perspective and it's just cute like him he's like kind of annoyed with her because she's like i'm just trying to like make this research happen and like save the world's problems like and you're annoying me and telling me all these things that I have to do to like be more protected or whatever and he's like you just need to listen to me and then it's him like inserting himself into her life to be like you're doing something that's super unsafe and she's like leave me alone yeah and then they go on like adventures together it's adorable okay that's cute I'm gonna read that before I'm not gonna read the other one that's fair yeah Yeah. honestly (laughs) forget me not was fun if you want something to read bust out in a day it's only like 300 and something pages you want something like light and cheesy but if you actually want like a a good book like maybe read the (laughs) fan fiction (laughs) which is usually the opposite so Uh, yeah honestly so I will say that like in the Hermione Granger Draco Malfoy like fanfic world there are some fucking heavy hitter fanfic writers in this there's no doubt that they have books published by and i mean this is an example julie soto wrote you know fan fiction but there are some of them that for sure these people are huge names in like the publishing writing world there's no doubt in my mind they're like way too good yeah yeah so i don't know because i mean uh we were talking about it but naomi novik writes fan fiction and i don't know if she writes like in this fandom or whatever mm-hmm. but i mean that's a big name that does fan fiction like for fun mm-hmm. so i have no doubt that people are like hmm, this is a little bit lower of a threshold you know duh. and more accessible too like you yeah. don't have to wait for a book to be on hold at the library you mm-hmm. don't have to buy it you don't yeah. have to read it on your kindle yeah because i mean uh fourth wing was like 17 bucks on amazon that is not Fuck that book <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> honestly <laughs> but that's just one in like recent memory it's like that is way too expensive for like mm-hmm. anybody to buy but this was cute forget me not julie soto if you're kind of in the mood for like a rom-com you know easy read like this is a good one there's a time and place for that mm-hmm. yeah awesome. grumpy sunshine it works <laughs> cute <laughs> yeah. well From Katie's shelf to yours. We'll see you on the next page. Hi, readers. If you'd like to help us pick our next book, send us a message on Instagram. Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'. (laughs)